Hey guys, this is Jacob Vakari, and um, I was talking to Jacob the other day, and we came to the conclusion that uh, you know he would like to see a little bit my thought process when it comes to encounter design and whatnot. Uh, but I was thinking about it, and I figured that actually, uh, you know, um, it might be more interesting to actually watch uh, um, an encounter analysis as I go through it. Uh, of course, if you would like to see how I document, how I actually write GDDs, how I actually write documentation for enemies, I'm happy to show you that. I have examples from previous jobs. Uh, you know, but I figured that this might be more interesting. You know, like we're all busy. Sometimes we don't feel like sitting down <laughs> and read half an hour of documentation or 20 minutes of documentation. Perhaps 20 minutes of gameplay and commentary might be more interesting. So that being said, uh, let's go ahead. If you would like to see documentation, please let me know. Uh, but you also get this. So um, this is Devil May Cry 5. I'm a pretty good player of Devil May Cry. So, you know, um, I'm probably going to choose like a simple mode, uh, Devil Hunter probably. But, you know, I'll try to explain a little bit the, the the concept of the encounters as opposed to kind of like show how I play or how a normal player would play. Uh, so that way, uh, you know, just so you are aware that I'm actually pretty proficient and I'm going to go through them very quickly. So let's just focus on the combat analysis of this. So... Yeah, I don't even care about customizing the character or anything. This is a, a pretty simple level. So, All right, so this is one of the latest levels in the game. Uh, but there's actually quite a few interesting encounters here. Uh, I tested today a little bit, and uh, I saw some pretty cool stuff. Let me just take, make sure, absolutely sure that I'm recording. It seems to be doing it, so let's uh, let's go for it. Uh, this part is a little bit boring, but well, you know. Just look with me. It will be interesting later. So here I'm going to fall on purpose, and this is going to be our first combat analysis here. So this uh, is a really nice encounter, actually, I think. It looks really simple, but it's actually quite smart. These guys here, uh, I don't know their names by heart, but uh, these guys here are slashers. However, the slashes are circular in pattern, so they have a little bit of like an area of effect kind of attack. Uh, they have a two-hit two combo uh, in which they do basically almost 360 degrees. And not only that, once you hit them enough, they will actually activate hyper armor, so you will not be able to cut, catch them in the air or do any throws or actually even hit them. They will actually attack, do a slash, a forward slash, with hyper armor that you can only evade. There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot stop it, you cannot grab them, do anything. Now, why do I think this is an interesting uh, challenge here? Because we're surrounded by these spikes. And yes, you could leave. You could leave uh, the area, sure. But uh, this is the only cry. We want the points, we want the score, the stylish points. So these guys are going to be, at some points, both of them hyper armored and slashing forward with a basically 360 degree um, attack which is literally going to create two trails at the same time of space that we cannot use so you could actually say it's a um, area of denial attack uh, in some measure and also we have the area of denial on the sides so that is going to create a really interesting um, um, mechanic see he has hyper armor he comes and he slashes while the other guy comes for me. So of course being slashers, both guys are gonna be coming for me sometimes at the same time. So we have several challenges here for the player. The first one is obviously pattern recognition, figure it out that uh, you know they're coming for you. Then we're gonna have part, uh, a lot in fact of um, periphery uh, skill, you know like figuring out that those uh, spikes on the sides are activated and maybe we're fighting this guy and he activates hyper armor so we're trying to move behind him but this guy is actually slashing at us at the same time so um, and then of course we're gonna have to kind of be able to know when they have hyper armor so it's actually much more challenging than it might appear from two simple enemies um, the hyper armor of course definitely adds a, a level of uh, complexity to the encounter. So he's hyper-armored, so there's nothing I can do, so I just need to get out of the way. 
and yep and I go for the other one but the spikes are around me so I have to be a little bit careful and of course I have to also prioritize which one I go for because one has hyper armor and the other might not so maybe I change the guy and I don't know what happened to him I think he backed out actually uh, he's somewhere because the music is still going but well oh he's here so kind of the same type of encounter these two guys is gonna go hyper armor now I cannot grab him I can just move while the other guy relocates and if he had been a little bit closer he would have attacked here we go 360 but I can break that one so that's fine he doesn't have hyper armor so that guy was about to activate hyper armor so I'm gonna focus on this guy but at the same time mobility wise whoop there we go we have to make sure that we're not too close to the to the size of the screen and we get a new guy which actually it's a bit of a shame he should have come a little bit earlier and be three guys at the same time I think so we could have like waited until between the other two they have about 60% of their life all together so we know for sure that one like both of them are alive um, and then this guy could have come as a support and that would have been really cool so this uh, encounter is finished let's move on so that was actually a really cool encounter made by two very simple enemies but you know with a little bit of level design help and uh, just the uh, very smart design choice of giving hyper armor to one of them it became so much more interesting now these two um, caskets there once I break them and let's uh, see what the other enemies are coming once I break them two very difficult enemies are gonna come out so this is really cool <laughs> because for the first time player uh, they are not gonna know that and these slashers here are probably gonna break it while I'm fighting them or I'm gonna break them as I'm fighting them and this is gonna be a surprise so these guys um, they have a little bit of uh, area of denial like straight line in which they attack uh, and they're armored then once they're close they're slashers and they have a little bit of armor so I cannot grab them but after a few hits I'm gonna be able to break it and I'm gonna be too able to isolate them so the optimal strategy is to actually separate them but they're not gonna allow me to do that of course they are gonna both attack me uh, as slashers and uh, so it's gonna be my duty to kind of like separate them a little bit and break one and then once he's broken really really separate him and be able to finish him off while the other guy is relocating and stuff like that right so yeah see that's uh, the area of denial attack he's, he's coming both of them are doing it whoops and he actually got me all right and there's nothing that I can do while he's doing that so I can grab him and now there's three of them so level design wise this is really cool because at any point they're gonna hit those two and I actually because I've tried this oh no I did it I tried it before the level I actually don't want them to do that so I'm gonna separate this guy into the air and kind of hurt him a little bit but it's not gonna be too much it's not gonna be good enough so this is the most the strongest enemy and it's really annoying um, it has a lot of mobility and now the other one has come and you have to be really good at fighting in the air so this test of skill is actually um, about staying in the air because these two uh, ladies here will only be in the air but they will slash from the air to the ground while you're busy fighting the tankier slashers on the floor uh, especially when they're rolling they become kind of tanks they cannot be hurt uh, but they're relatively fast for a tank and um, and yeah these uh, ladies will come and slash at you while they're you distracted which seems to be pretty much what David McCry is about so here the skill test for the player is like can you actually stay in the air and hit these ladies for long enough to be ready get ready of them to be actually focused on the floor or are you ready to fight on the floor but they might come and slash you right risk and reward it's up to you which strategy but both of them have uh, difficulties even though uh, actually even if you focus on the floor and they come once you finish with the floor enemies you're gonna have to eventually get in the air or wait for them to come onto the floor but they don't really come onto the floor that much so you know basically the skill here is like the game designers are saying hey you're one of the last levels on the game 
and you know how you need to know how to stay in the air for a long time how to hit them and how to evade in the air so there's a skill test for timing uh, in terms of like you have to touch them to jump but they're gonna attack so you have to jump right at the same time right at the at the right time but still stay in, stay in the air so that is difficult to explain but let me show you how how it kind of works so I'm gonna ignore these guys okay so I jump cancel I hit I jump cancel so see I stay in the air Ooh, and I got lucky and she died pretty easily no I don't want to focus on him I want to stay in the air with her and I'm just waiting for my opportunity to hit her I, I use him as a elevator as a stair and she's bleeding so I can shoot her see but it's about being able to jump cancel that's the skill that the game designers are checking for and there is absolutely no way that every player that plays them in cry knows how to do this this is a relatively uh, advanced technique but you know if you are able to do it you're gonna have a much easier time playing the game that's for sure well and she got red let's shoot her so there's you see a, a little bit of pattern recognition as well there's definitely a, a lot of input skill on this part of the game and that was a cancel uh, counter cancel now I can get another guy and let's see I want to focus on him but I have to be aware of the slashers around him so I'm gonna lift him all right and I got him as isolated and now like me I go both of them at the same time and uh, and I can not worry too much about the uh, uh, the area combat. Okay, and there we are. A maximum uh, maximum score as well. So that was a pretty good one. Uh, as you can see, the level design there's not much to it. It's just like an arena arena. Pretty simple. And as by uh, uh, Devil May Cry history, it closes the door, and you have to fight. Uh, I've been trying to think of ways to do something like that more interesting, but actually it's pretty it's pretty useful. It's pretty much how they do it in Doom 2016, Doom Eternal and stuff. It just, it just works. So this is interesting. This guy has a... Uh, I talked about it in the other video, but I think this video is turning out better. Um, so this guy's a slasher, but he has a shield. So actually, he's kind of an interesting character. By himself, he's very easy. You just get on his back, jump over him, get on his back and uh, blast him. Or break his uh, his shield from the front and the front, but he becomes a much more interesting character once uh, he gets combined with other characters. So let's hope that that's what's going to happen here. Let's see. So you know, well, the challenge here is obviously like, can you break the the shield, right? In this case, you're not going to be able to come behind him. He's actually going to turn around. After three hits, he's actually going to defend and counter. But now, of course, he played himself because. He showed me his back. And he's done. Alright. So let's see if we get a combination of that character with something else. Because it's one of the coolest characters in the game. Aha! Same situation with Chu. Let's see how this plays. Because I'm going to be... So now the situation is going to be either I attack one from the front. And he's going to keep me in place while the other one comes and slashes. Or I have to be extremely mobile and get behind the back of one and evade the other one as he slashes. No matter what, the skill test is about recognizing when you get countered, being able to evade the counter attack, and being to evade the periphery attacks, uh, which is, of course, what Devil May Cry is about, right? So, uh -huh, there's the counter. Whoops, and he actually got me. A little bit hard to see. The legibility of two enemies, of course, much more difficult. And he's defending really well. But I was able to isolate the AI. That AI on the back is being really silly right now. I think it's blocked uh, by the pathfinding, actually. Because it should be moving. So pathfinding-wise... Oh, no, he's defending the, the entrance, actually. Okay. So as you see, I can uh, stun them and keep from the back. So... You know, if you're an advanced enough player, you can actually do that strategy. The AI is really good. So I can like, whoop, if he lets me show you, 
I hit from the front, and he tries to defend, and I come from the back while he's playing that animation, and I just got him. You know, it's like too easy. So, really interesting, simple uh, AI, so to speak, but actually gives a lot of possibilities to the player, which I think is something that uh, every uh, studio should take advantage of, of course. You know, uh, bring the emerging complexity from simpler systems. And we have two of them again here. Uh, for some reason, we get them from the back immediately. Well, I guess it's a circular path in level design. Whoop. And see, oh, that's actually quite interesting because they're defending so hard this area here, they actually don't want to come out of it, that they are actually much more defensive than they would usually be. You can see that there's another one there. So one of the dominant strategies is to jump above them and come from the back. But because they're trying so hard not to move from here, and they don't have, I don't have space to actually do that, which is going to force me to hit them from the front. And as I hit one from the front, the other one is going to come for me, right? Oh, and counter attack and slash at the same time. There you go. Really well done. Really interesting. Excellent design. Oops, uh, he's coming for me. But I got him. And there's another guy waiting for us there. So actually, let's help them a little bit and give them a chance to... Oh, there's two, three of them. How many of them are there? That's a lot. Okay, so we're going to see how it combines when they have like three or four of them. I have not played this part of the game before. Or maybe I did back in the day. So his shield is almost broken. But I don't even bother with that. Well, now he's breaking it. Yeah. Wow, this is uh, quite interesting level design wise. They're literally using them as fighting doors. Okay, get him from the back. Uh, he's done, pretty much. Okay, I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to keep going. Okay, so that was a really interesting uh, challenge. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's a tank. Uh, he has an area of denial attack. He's really annoying. He's really difficult to read. It's, he's actually the worst example of animation in the game. Okay, so we got the slasher that keeps you in place while the other tank rams you. But also he's so big that you want to stay in place. So the other guys come and slash at you as well. And let's see what else are coming. Oh, four of them. Okay. Something else. Okay, so we are going to have a lot of slashers. This is a really cool encounter because usually we would get like this is one of the last levels of the game so usually we would get some slashers but these slashers are not just slashers they also keep you in place so as i fight this guy if he's defending other slashers can come for me but this tank actually also keeps you in place of course um and he has a quite a area of effect type of attack like quite um wide and quite difficult to read so while you are placed against either his shield or that guy, anyone can come for you. So he can actually ram or any of these guys can slash. So this is actually going to be a challenge. Now, how do we meet this challenge? We know that the players are able to fight in the air quite effectively. So that's what we're asking them to do here. We're asking, hey, can you actually fight in the air? Are you good enough at that? Because we're going to give you a good challenge. So if you wanted to fight this fight on the floor, I think even a good player would get destroyed. You need to fight in the air. I'm going to try to play it a little bit on the floor, just for fun. But I don't think this is how it's supposed to be played at all. See, this guy is keeping track of me very easily. This is going to be very tedious. It's going to take forever to play on the floor. And as, uh, as I mentioned, they're going to start coming for me. I'm going to get surrounded eventually. And this guy is going to do his area of effect attack. And it's going to be really annoying. So now let's see how I would play it from the air. Okay, so we know that the players, uh, we, are, we are asking the player, can you actually fight in the air? Do you have that skill? It's going to make it a lot easier for you because you just isolate the enemies. So Okay, here we go. And of course, I want to 
be very mobile and keep track of the guy that's coming for me but then he's the ram so once he rammed i got him on the back i'm gonna take the advantage but still keep track of the enemies on the sides and as i foresaw their shields make me a lot slower than i wish i was giving others the opportunity to come from the sides or ram as the case was right now and he's starting with his annoyance attacks like i hate this character it's really difficult to read see i got hit and i don't know why i think that animation wise those uh when he attacks those two tongues that he has should move forward and they should have a tail a bigger tail when he's rotating it's fine i can tell what's going on but there uh, i think the those tongues are a missed opportunity to actually give a much better tail All right, and I got him, but just a B, so it's, I didn't do very well. That's fine. It's a difficult encounter. But uh, yeah, so this is a completely different encounter from the other one. From the other one, the enemies are gonna try to keep you down, keep you in the same place, um, as opposed to having to move behind their backs and kind of like figure out how you're gonna move against this slasher and that slasher. It actually, the addition of the tank makes you stay put a lot. And I remember this one to be a good fight. So let's see, very, very simple slashers, two of them, and a Basfemot. So I talked about it in the other video about him, but I might not share it. These two guys are slashers, extremely simple, no defensive capabilities at all, uh, relatively quick, but they just come in a straight line and um, slash vertically. Or if you're next to them, they will do a half circle slash, very easy to dodge. But the Basfemot, what he does is uh, he makes um, uh, ice spikes on the floor, forcing you to move, or he throws ice at you. Now, he also has hyper armor, so you're not able to grab him easily. You have to go and hit him in the air until he drops on the floor. And once he drops on the floor, you can hit him and kill him. Now, what does that mean? Uh, you have to be very mobile in the air because he's floating. Um... And once he falls, he's going to make you stay in place. So why is this a good combination? Once you hit him in the air, first of all, you have to get to him. So you have to go through these guys who are attacking you and slashing at you. You have to get to him. Of course, if you do it through the air, it's going to be easier. But they can still you in the, hit you in the air. So that's why they chose these guys with like the big uh, long weapons. So they can hit you in the air. And not something with like shorter weapons like the hyper armor enemies that we saw before. So I'm going to have to evade them and hit him and when he drops i'm gonna bash him but they are gonna come from the back so it's actually a really simple looking uh design but it's actually very effective and as you saw trying to get to him he gets uh, these uh, projectiles and i mean i'm destroying him because i know what to do against him but if i let him recover at all see this guy was these two guys i just killed him and like I said, he concentrated me here. He focused me here because he was falling onto the floor. And now these two guys are literally getting ready for me to the point that we can actually see the lens flare of the attack. So I got lucky and I shot him by mistake. But they were coming for me, right? And even there you could see actually the attack that would hit me vertically. All right, and that's another encounter. Looks so simple, but it's so smart. So that's uh, something that I like to, like I said, focus on. You know, orthogonal differentiation of enemies so that you can actually know. Um, oh, this is a really good one. Uh, very simple systems, very uh, straightforward AIs, but extremely complex uh, gameplay. So now we get a combination of everything that we've seen before. Simple slasher, another simple slasher, probably another one is going to appear there, and then the hyper armor slashers. So that's going to mean that I'm going to have to prioritize pretty well and keep extremely mobile because there's going to be a lot of slashing going on. I'm literally surrounded. But now, now we get interesting. This guy here, um, he spawns more enemies. So he's the highest priority of all. He has an area of denial effect. Uh, that goes forward, it's fire on the floor, two, 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 like that, and hits you pretty hard. He also has a long melee attack right in front of him, and he also has a circular melee when you're close to him. So he's incredibly tough, 
and he teleports. So what does that mean for this encounter? This encounter is really tough because you have to be incredibly mobile. Not only incredibly mobile, <clears throat> you actually have to figure out where he is at all times because you don't want him to keep spawning things. So you have to evade the slashing, be aware of the hyper armor, what the hyper armor state is, be aware where that guy is moving, and evade his attacks and hit him and prioritize him. So this is quite a challenge. Let's see how it goes. So as you can see, I'm already confused as to where each guy is. Where is he moving? I want to go for him first. This guy already hit him, so now he's going to go into hyper armor, but that one doesn't have hyper armor here. So until I figure out where my big enemy is, I'm going to move to him. But even just by touching the floor, I tried to get slashed. Uh, and I got hit, of course. I'm going to try to do as much damage to this guy before he gets hyper armored. And there we go. Nice. Try to eliminate some of the uh, easier slashers to kind of like have some space. And I don't even know where the big guy is. So it's really difficult to keep prioritizing him. I have to like look around. Did I actually kill him? No, there he was. See, so, whoop. Yep, area of effect. And I find it interesting that there's another enemy there. He disappears. He, I don't know where he is. Two, two, two. Aha. And frontal attack. Evade and punish. And I didn't even see that attack. Uh, so my pattern recognition with him is not so high. And he's invoking someone. He's summoning. So I'm going to punish. But of course, I didn't punish fast enough. And I actually killed him. But now, of course, I have to pay the price because I get a hyper-armored enemy. Because I didn't punish fast enough. So excellent risk and reward. And, you know, let's see. This guy, can I grab him? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't recognize the hyper armor. All right. We got him. And let's see what's coming up next. I think I'm going to finish the, uh, the video soon. Because uh, hopefully you guys can actually see the mental process of how... Uh, the recognition of enemy design, enemy placement, and you can see the uh, the level wide difficulty, right? Uh, we started with two slashes with hyper armor, then we went into like uh, some of the shield guys, which are a little bit more complicated. They demand. So we started with mobility, then we went with mobility against enemies that try to keep you in place, uh, and then ah, yeah, and this is the final enemy. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, so. The, um, the difficulty kept progressing, right? Like first challenge was mobility and being able to aware of the hyper armor. The second challenge was mobility plus being forced to stay in place. Well, the first challenge also we had the spikes as well. Then we had the really cool challenge of having enemies that we want to be behind their back, but we don't actually have space to get behind their backs. So that was really fun, really interesting. Uh, then we had the tank with the slashers, um, with the slashers that keep you in place, while also the tank wants to keep you in place, so the slashers come around. So that was excellent design. Very simple. Uh, with, and, and then the final one would be the hyper armors, the slashers, and the invoker, right? Uh, the enemy that invokes. And as you can see, he had a little bit of melee. In fact, I think that enemy has a little bit too many melee possibilities. You never really see him alone in the game, so I think he should be a little bit weaker in terms of melee because of the teleporting. Or taking the teleporting off or like reducing his ability to teleport so much, you know, I think he's a little bit too much. Uh, but you know, that's some imbalancing. So, but the point being that, uh, of course, we've seen the difficulty progress and with just a few pieces. So we have the teleporter guy, uh, the hyper armors, the shield guys, and the slashers. Uh, oh, and the tank. So we've only seen five types of enemies, but from those th five types of enemies, we can create dozens, if not hundreds, of interesting situations for the player. So that's uh, a testament to orthogonal differentiation and emerging complexity. And every case, uh, in some of them I commented, maybe some of them I, I forgot, but in every single case, there's a risk reward. So for example, the guys with the shields, do I want to go through the shield? Well, there's a reward because then I'm going to be able to destroy them once that's done. 
but there's also um, uh, a risk because if I get hit by the counter or while I'm doing that, I'm getting hit by another another slasher. I have to be very aware of my surroundings and whatnot. So there's a challenge there. So excellent design, of course. I mean, the Devil May Cry team is one of the best in the world in terms of combat. That's what they're known for. And hopefully this uh, helped you understand a little bit my mentality, the way that I think about combat design and the way to analyze uh, this uh, kind of design. Like I said, I would love to share with you uh, some design documents if you want to see something a bit clearer in terms of how I document this kind of stuff. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this. And uh, until, that, until the time that we speak again, I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you very much for your time.